Wonderful. Oh, just getting there, guys. Just bear with me. Okay. Speak a bit. Ah, here we are. Okay, so um, woman Jekka, woman Inji, Babapul Kuyap, Niranik Cassie, Dadungalang Woiwarang Gurnai, Bik, Girlbrook Lyric. So what I've just said is I've said, welcome. Uh, my name is Cassie. I'm a Tangarong woman of the Kula Nation. I've also got connections to Wawandri and Gunai that I live and um, reside on country where I am today. So I'm actually at Gunai Kurnai country here in Boysdale, but I follow my grandfather's um, and my ancestors' footprints and so I'm Dadungarang, a Tangarong woman. Uh, with my connection to Wawandri, that's through my grandmother. And um, I also pay respects to and acknowledge my um, non-Indigenous mother as well. So my, um, my father is Aboriginal, my mum's white Australian, and I have this passion for my culture and teaching education all over Australia and overseas as well. So when I say woman jekka, woman jekka actually means to come with purpose. So breaking it down the language, um, it means come with purpose. And you've all came here with a purpose to learn about our culture. Also to reflecting upon um, our native plants, our flora and fauna, and respect of country. So I would like to int um, introduce myself as Cassie Latham, the Tangarong Bush Tucker or Babapu Kuyab, Bush Tucker woman, Warat Bajur. So I'm also a medicine woman. So today you'll be actually learning a lot about um, medicines, bush plants, uh, caring for country, and how to nurture yourself in um, what we are basically dealing with at the moment is um, COVID. So I know that um, most of you have probably been in lockdown for a while, is that correct? Yes, yeah. If, if you do wanna join the screen so I can see your beautiful faces, please do so because I find it's actually, um, it makes me feel more um, engaged with you so I can see your faces and what you're like and then I can ask you questions as well because this, this presentation isn't just about me, it's about you too. And it's about coming on board and walking as one together on this beautiful path, especially this week of NAIDOC week. So what I've actually just done for you, thank you everyone who's turned on the screens, that's beautiful, lovely, I can see everyone now. As I said, this is um, you know, a workshop that I want to take you back in the past to the present and what we're actually gonna be expecting for the future. So um, it's gonna be a wonderful day. Also too, if you do have to get up and go somewhere, that's fine, okay? Make yourself a cuppa. I just want you to be able to relax, enjoy, ask questions, take it all in, um, you know? And, and then, as I said, this is not just about me, it's about you too. So I'm actually gonna be asking about your knowledge and seeing how, how um, you know, you've actually adapted to um, cultural ways as well in your community. So, so don't be afraid if I pick on you a little bit, okay, Shane? If I do say, okay, Shane, we're gonna um, hear from you now, okay, just be prepared. And if you aren't confident enough to answer the questions or you, know, you might not know them, you know, just try your best. Um, otherwise we'll pass and we'll go to someone else. So as I said, it's not me educating you today. You're going to be actually presenting to me too. And I, as I said, it is about getting um, everyone involved and, um, and having a lot of fun. So to start off my workshop, okay, I've actually just done a beautiful cleansing ceremony. Now, obviously I can't be there in person. You know, we can't be um, face to face. So I'm doing this through okay the um online all right so what i've done in my beautiful she oak um, girl bowl that i created when it was green i've actually carved with a bone traditional knife and carved it out while it was green and this is what i carry all over country uh, when i do lots of different works because um, it's small, it's convenient, but also to it gives me empowerment and also clear passage when I do travel to different parts of country. Now, as I said, I live here, I was born, bred, live here at, on Gunai Kurnai country. And I um, respect the, and acknowledge the traditional owners here. Um, with, with my bowl, um, what I normally do is when I do travel um, say to Kulin Nation, to my Tangarong country, or Wurundjeri, or Wunawaran country, Wathrong, um, I always carry this bowl because for me to have clear passage and to respect my law, L-O-R-E, 
I have to smoke myself. I have to cleanse myself. And this is a really important part of our culture in starting off a workshop. So if you saw me in person, you would actually all be walking through a door to sit at tables or outside. I'll always have this bell bowl sitting there with smoking lemon scented gum leaves. The reason why I use lemon scented gum is because it's also a beautiful medicine that people, I love people to, to rub on them as um, they leave the workshop. So that's something to look forward to um, at a later time. But, um, but by having the lemon scented gum and it's smouldering away with a beautiful bunch of wedge-tailed eagle feather, um, I'm actually just lightly just alighting that beautiful smudge and the leaves in there to do the beautiful cleansing and healing as well. Also too, when I do go over country, and I want you to do this today, I want you to go outside and explore, get a little bit of fresh air, go find a eucalyptus tree, okay? Get a gum leaf, just one, one gum leaf, put it in a glass of water and and lick it like that because that's actually another clear passage and cleansing and respecting law as well. So it's actually saying that I'm here on Coolin country or Gunai country or whatever part of country you're from, I'll ask you in a minute, this actually dipping in the gum leaf in water and licking it actually um, shows those communities that you are here to respect, to nurture and follow Bunjil's law. So this is another part of clear passage. So when us Aboriginal people travel, say if I travel up to Darwin, I will always make sure that I get a gum leaf, I stick it in water and I lick it to say that I'm going to respect their country and I acknowledge their traditional owners and I'm going to abide by their law. If I'm going to do some cultural activities, I need to seek permissions. It's so important to do that. So even though here I'm on Gunai Kurnai country, I do have connections here. So um, I always still like to do cleansings and celebrate um, my, my culture from home. So the lemon scented gum, if you're at the workshop with me today, okay, like face to face, you'll actually get smoked, okay, to cleanse and to get rid of any bad negative or any bad um, feelings that you might have or any grieving, a uh, little bit of sorry business you might be going through. It actually cleanses your spirit, okay, your mara. Your marap mangi, it means spirit within, it's cleansing. But I've done this from very afar for you today. The lemon scented gum, okay, and I'm talking a little bit fast today because two hours, I normally do this session in five. So um, it might look like and seem really long for you guys, like, oh, two hours listening to Cassie. But honestly, it, it's just, I'm hoping to really give you my knowledge and share my culture with you that it'll empower you to carry it forward and share with others as well. Okay, that's my big passion. Now, the lemon scented gum, you've got it all around your suburbs. Okay, you just, it's all about identity and this is what I'm going to be teaching you today. Some of you already might know about the lemon scented gum. You could be walking down the streets or even along the Yarra River and you'll see these beautiful salmon beautiful waxy salmon um, colored gum trees, okay? They might have a little flower coming out because they are flowering gums as well. So when you walk past and you see the beautiful pink waxy salmon um, trunks, look down um, below because you'll see burgundy little curled pieces of bark because the gum actually drops the, um, or sheds its bark and it drops to the ground. And that's when the flowers come out on the gum trees, okay? It empowers the gum. Now, how you also identify the lemon scented gum is by the long gum leaves, okay? But it's not just about looking, all right? It's about senses, using your senses. So not just your eyes, but also by grabbing, ripping some leaves off. And I always try and say, please respect our living um, trees. Always look down after a big windy day, look down on the ground because you might actually see um, some have actually blown off the tree. Pick them up and take them instead instead of breaking some off, okay? So what I normally do is I normally rip, rip the leaves open, okay? And straight away you can feel and you can smell, like you can feel the tannin coming out, the oils, okay? And you can smell that beautiful, strong lemon scent, all right? You can put this in your cuppa, and just infuse and drink it. it. It's actually really good for colds and flus, just like the lemon myrtle. 
everyone knows a lemon myrtle is the most popular, um, you know, uh, bush tucker food, uh, bush tucker plant, I should say. Everyone knows a lemon myrtle, but they don't realise that lemon scented gum is more powerful in antioxidants and antibacterial, antiviral. So these leaves, not only can you boil up and you can sip, infuse and sip for a nice colds and congestion and everything, but when you burn them, okay, in a coulomon or a bell bowl or even in a big dish or a baking dish, you burn those leaves down and the fine ash sits at the bottom. When that fine ash, okay, is still nice and warm, and this usually happens when people leave my workshops, I always say, before you ever leave my workshop, you have to put your hands in that beautiful ash and rub it over your neck and your chest, your arms, because it's, it wards off bad spirit, but it also nurtures, nurtures you as a protective barrier. So when I was a child, I, my great, my Jinjin used to actually always do this and she used to burn down the lemon scented gum, the ash, the warm ash, she used to tip out in her hands and she used to, and she used to rub it all over us because it acted like a talcum powder, but with benefits, okay? As I said, colds and, and flus, toxins, everything. It was a protective barrier, but also too, she'd rub it all over our arms and I carry this, this forward and share this with, with everyone because it's an insect repellent too. So you just have to, once you do find this tree, you'll never go back to a shop to buy Aerogard or any, or Bushman's or anything, forget it. Just these leaves, even when they're dry, you can still scrunch them up, rub them over, even stick them in your, in your pack um, when you're hiking because it deters mozzies and flies and, and bugs and everything. It is amazing. And if you do carry it like this, again, it's a swap too. So very, very useful, all right? So the lemon scented gum is, um, is one of my favorite gums. Uh, as I said, the healing properties is unbelievable and um, it's all about identity. And I will be showcasing all these little, um, little um, pieces of information on my Instagram as well. So if you do follow me, um, you'll see what, what I've got laid out here is on my Instagram, okay? And if you go to that, you'll see the big setup. It takes me about 10 hours actually to set up every single workshop um, because I'm a seasonal forager. So I go out when things are ready and I harvest and I come back and I, I display. Um, people used to say to me, oh, can I buy this off you? And can I buy that off you? And I say, well, I, I would sell it again, but I just can't keep up with de the demands. And I don't have a big enough freezer to freeze all these berries and fruits and everything because I am seasonal, all right? So eucalyptus, we're starting off with the eucalyptus. Now, um, a couple of other eucalyptus trees that I really love and you'll be able to identify. And you have to remember too, I never got, up, got bought up with scientific botanical um, Latin names or anything. That just goes straight over my head. So do not ask me anything about scientific research or, or um, you know, any of that because it just goes whoop. All right. I actually got bought up on country. So my grandfather, uh, my father, my mother also too, my Jinjin, we go out on country and we would identify with our eyes. Okay. It was all about talking, no jotting downs and no, um, no other scientific stuff. We actually learned our language too. So, but that's another story for a different day. But you can see this one here, okay. So this one here, another eucalyptus, and it's got nice little oval, oval shaped leaves, tiny little, all packed up, okay. Now, what I do, and I carry this forward too, is with these leaves, if I rub, if I rub, can you see it changing colour? Right? It's going to change colour. Now, that there, that changing of the colour, and you smell your finger, it's fixed, vapour drops. Straight up right there, okay? Always remember it's a rounded leaf. Anything with a rounded leaf, um, let's see, I can't even find what I was looking for now. Uh, oh, here it is. Stop looking. Anything with a rounded leaf will, will carry more eucalyptus oil. This is what I've grown up with, okay? My grandfather used to say, any rounded leaf is the one with the most um, uh, beneficial properties 
that, um, that will heal you more so quicker than the narrow leaf. So we call, I call these narrow leaves because they're long and thin and narrow. And then we've got the rounded leaf eucalyptuses. So there's so many different species as we know of eucalyptus. There's yellow box, there's um, blue box, there's mountain ash. There, there's so many. And as I said, like I, I just identify the ones by just walking along country and I know straight away, okay, that one's my big vapor drop. So I'm gonna go and pick that one. And as I said, all you have to do is rub your finger and it will change a darker color and the oils will come out on your fingers so you can inhale or even just rub, okay, rub, rub the eucalyptus leaf over your clothes for a deodorizer. Um, with my partner, when he gets home, um, his, his shoes, he doesn't realize that, I think he does know that I do it, but I actually get a whole heap and I actually rip them in half. I rip them in half and I stick them in his shoes because it is a deodorizer and it's antifungal too. So there's no going to be no tin ear at my house, all right? Mm -mm -mm. Also too, in hot water, hot water, um, these leaves, pop them in, okay? When it's lukewarm, stick your feet in it for a nice soothing detox, all right? So it is really good if anyone's got, you know, I know this sounds really gross, tinea or um, cracked heels and stuff, it's actually gonna soften it all up and make it a lot better, all right? And you can do this with um, the lemon scented gum as well because they're all antiviral and antibacterial. You can go into the supermarket and pull off the shelf, you know, a pure eucalyptus um, bottle with oils and stuff, you know that's the best cleaning products, all right? The best cleaning product. All you just need to put in a little spritzer and spritz around with a little bit of water and it cleans, disinfects everything, all right? You can even put it in your wash. So in my, in my laundry, in these goes. In the, kids, in the kids' cupboards and sock drawers and everything, in they go. In the gym bags, in they go, okay? Because it is a natural deodorizer. Um, also too, um, what I love to do is um, I love to get all the leaves and I can't tell you everything because it'll give too much away. But in a little pan, all right, in a little pan, I put those beautiful eucalyptus leaves. I normally rip them up though and I put them into a little pan. Now, I'm not gonna demonstrate this. I did yesterday and I think I had everyone nearly pass out, but I actually come across a deceased emu. Unfortunately, where I live, I live up in the bush and we get them all the time. So I respectfully take the animals home, I skin them, I collect their feathers and I collect the fat too. So the pure emu fat is a part of my healing and it's what I, I bottle up we, and I experiment with all my bush tucker herbs and spices and leaves and oils to make medicine, all right? So um, what I normally do is I get a little pan, okay? I only need something a little like this. It looks like a little kitty's thing, but anyway. A little pan and with that pure emu fat that I, I collect from the, the bottom of the emu, so meaning the actual buttocks of the emu, I actually take it away, I freeze it, I defrost it, I boil it up, I strain it. This way it gets rid of any bacterial or any um, parasites that the emu could have, okay? Not that I have come across anything that's been, you know, nasty. But, um, but by processing the emu fat, then I can put it in over the top. So I put the eucalyptus leaves in first. So the eucalyptus leaves go in first. And then I put the, um, say, a cup of pure emu fat in over the top and I bring it to a slight boil. And what, what happens is that the leaves oil, just like a distiller does, the leaves though um, release all their beautiful natural healing oils into the emu fat. So it makes that pure emu fat enriched with beautiful bush medicine. Then what I do is I strain it. I strain it out, I let it cool down, I freeze it. Then I pull it out and then I boil up another batch with using that same, so I put in more um, gum leaves, the frozen fat, boil it up so it doubles up in strength. So if I do this five or six times, I've got a massive, powerful blend of bush medicine, okay? So some people go, oh, but we, we want to do this. We want to have emu fat. We want to do, well, you're not going to go and find our emus, I can assure you, okay? But you can actually get online to emu tracks or logic, emu logic, and you can buy your pure emu oil off, off the um, online shop there. Don't go into chemist warehouse or anything because they're synthetic, all right? Always be mindful of that. 
but the pure emu oil, that's what you can actually boil up and make your own medicine. There is some medicines that I can't share with you today because they are very, very significant to my people and I'm the carrier of the warat. And the warat means in language, um, medicine. But something that I have just actually found, and there's only a tiny little bottle of it, is ligament. So the ligaments of the emu, I actually found that it's more powerful, that it penetrates the epidermal. So it penetrates that first layer of the skin, it goes straight in. And with my bush tucker plants, that I'm gonna show you more of in a minute, um, it actually attacks the tendons, the muscles, the nerves, everything. Now, people, if you do, if anyone does follow me, they know that I'm injury prone. Okay, I'm always doing something. I'm always, you know, getting bitten by a snake or getting tendonitis or whatever. But, um, you know, two weeks ago, I had all this strapped up, five micro tears, uh, everything's healed at the moment. So it's, it's, it's due to my, my bush medicine. Also to, with, with the medicines, <sighs> It's endless. You can actually go online and click and order some mountain peppercorns. You can do the same thing. Pop it into a pan, um, put some emu fat. If you don't want to do emu fat, you can have olive oil or beeswax or coconut oil and bring it to the boil and infuse that oil. Tip it into little jars like this, okay, and uh, let it set and, you, and you're done. So, you know, you, you, this, this is a pharmacy as well as an edible... Um, you know, beneficial food source for you. So my people weren't silly. We we had, there was something there for everything. And I'm still, still nutting out a few things. On my property, I have 280 edible and medicinal plants. Um, I've got the largest seed bank in Australia as well. And I've been collecting since I was eight years old. And um, my, my father thought I was crazy because he walked into my room and instead of Barbie dolls, there was just containers of seeds and plant stuff and, and worms and crickets and bugs and lizards. But anyway, that's another story. Um, so this is, and sorry, my daughter has stuck her finger in that, but, um, but this is um, the balm that's all set down. And as I said, it's really good for, for strains, um, arthritis, basically anything, any, any tissue injuries or ligament damage, um, even after surgery is really good. It's a, a beautiful healing balm. I also to um, love nothing more to collect um, beeswax, like the actual beeswax. So um, having pure beeswax to add to that, to thicken that up for some um, is really, really nice and soothing too. I won't go into the story about the bees because um, that's a long one and um, you don't want to hear all the gory details of um, what happened. <laughs> so this here, this here, is the rarest eucalyptus tree in Australia, okay? The rarest one. And there's a couple of nurseries that do stock it. Um, I will be going to Peppermint Ridge on the 28th and 29th of this month, and they do stock the strawberry gum plant. This is, and sorry guys, I'm just gonna um, you know, make you feel a bit uncomfortable. No, I'm not. Um, this is actually really good for women's business. So ladies, menopause, uh, you know, you have that time of month, you know, pains, headaches, um, you know, stresses from your everyday life. This is unbelievable. It stops hot flushes, you know, it's, it's it just, it is unbelievable. Okay, so um, my, my grandfather used to always say, um, you know, it is about identity. And unfortunately, this is introduced from New South Wales. But when I went up to the New South Wales and I was working with the rangers up there, we actually went to a part of the um, our country, um, which was a mountain part, and we actually saw the strawberry gums growing naturally in their beautiful environment. And I just loved it. And the story is that um, the men used to actually break the stems because when you break the stems, you can actually smell that really empowering, um, uh, oh, it's like a passion fruit, citrus and strawberry um, incense smell. And they used to rub it over themselves to actually attract ladies. So, um, you know, it was kind of like a perfume for men. And um, the leaves too, when you do pull off the leaves, they can give you about 70 cups of tea. So one leaf can give you 70 cups of bush tucker tea. All I do again is just break it in half and put it into my nice cuppa. Oh, okay, into hot water and infuse it for about five or six minutes and then sip slowly and it was just like, oh, lovely. If you do grow your own, okay, and I've got so many here, it's unbelievable. I actually pick them off and you can do this with any eucalyptus trees. 
put it in your shower, turn the hot water on, let it steam up, rip up a couple of the leaves, put it down on the bottom so this, the hot water will hit the um, um, leaf and infuse that beautiful oil. So when you hop in, you're actually smothering yourself um, with cleansing um, steam from the eucalyptus. So you're actually going to have like a, it's like you get out and you feel like you've been in a rainforest, you know, it's like, woo, yeah. So um, the strawberry gum, Again, it is a more so, not a narrow leaf, but it is a, a rounded leaf. So it does hold lots of um, oil in this. And you can also to order these online. Um, I always say any of the foods that I'm talking about today and you wanna order some, please support indigenous Aboriginal owned businesses. It is so important. There's so many non-indigenous people out there that are actually jumping in on the market at the moment. And I, for one, I just, I really want to see people support our, our people because um, it gives our youth um, and encourages our youth to uh, learn more about our plants and nurture their culture as well. So um, that's a strawberry gum. And another eucalyptus um, that I do talk about, I don't actually have here today because I didn't have time to run out and grab it. So unfortunately I don't have that one, but, but that's okay because we've got plenty more to talk about. So um, now jumping on to something totally different in my little Coolamon here. So Coolamon is a little bark bowl that's cut out of either red gum tree, um, sometimes a spotted gum, uh, also stringy bark, but I normally cut my Coolamons out of red gum trees. Um, that have actually fallen down. Again, I don't like to cut and scar trees if I don't have to. I normally wait till their branches fall down and I cut them. But that's another story. This little weed here, and it is a, like a weed, it's called common weed or old man weed, sneeze weed. Because when you do find it, okay, in dams, um, in wetlands, especially around the waterways, you'll be walking around, you go, oh, what's that? And it's, it's really, really, whoo, cha-cha-cha really strong, gets up your nose, and of course you start sneezing. You're sneezing, sneezing, sneezing. But I'm telling you what, if, um, if you do the infusion, like I said, um, oils, boil the sneeze weed up, strain it, bag it up. Oh, it is such good medicine. It is unbelievable. And for, especially for anxiety too, um, I've got a lot of clients that come to me that I do healings for and, um, and they rub the beautiful sneeze weed balm on. But it's also good for um, rosella. It's good for contact dermatitis, eczemas, acne. It is unbelievable. So any skin conditions, the sneeze weed with the pure emu fat, as I said, it penetrates, it goes in and it clears everything up. So it is unbelievable. So anyone with skin disorders, um, this is the one to go for. You can see this is dried out, okay, at the moment and down in the bowl is all the seeds. So what I normally do is when I do pick it, I, 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 I gather what I need and then I never throw anything out, I dry it out because it can still be processed. And if it does drop its seeds, I go and replant it again. And like my people many, many years ago, before colonization, we never ever took um, a large amount of things, whether it was animals, plants. We, we always made sure that we left enough for um, the wildlife and also for other tribes as well. So that, that's something that I like to keep um, you know, in, in context as well, that when you do go out um, and even grow your own, uh, it's really important just to take what you need because if you take too much, then you just got an overload. And I always say utilize everything as well. So in saying that, um, this is kabunji, and you probably see this all around the wetlands. Kabunji. Has everyone seen this? It normally has a stalk with a real fluffy big brown, um, you know, um, flower head on the top. Well, that flower head, there's not one at the moment because obviously it's not season for it, but that flower head is actually like a fire lighter. If you light those ones up, they're going to last for a while. But there's other significant um, uh, ways of actually utilising that flower. And what we do is we can actually make flour. So we can actually pull off the seeds and grind them down to make a beautiful fine flour, which I'm going to actually step up. Um, and talk about in a minute about the fl different flowers that I make. But the kabunji is, um, or the bulrush, 
is also a beautiful weaving fiber. And I love to process this and teach people basket weaving and also string fiber making as well. And while we actually do that, we actually chew on the ends, okay, because the, the roots taste like a spring onion. So you know how you might go to the shop and go and buy a big, big, you know, bunch of spring onions to chop up and garnish your dishes? Why not go and get a little bit of kabunji, wash it up, and chop it up finely and try that instead. Because believe me, it is unbelievable. You'll never ever go and buy spring onions again when you've got kabunji. But you've got to remember too, you can only take what you need, but there are a filtering system for our waterways and catchments. So these, these roots actually filter bacteria. So what I normally do is I don't get the full root. I just cut where I need to or pull out and it'll just um, basically slide out of its um, root system and that's what I will eat. I actually don't pull everything up because I want those root systems to, to grow again and then to keep filtering our waterways for our fish and bird life. And another one um, that I, I like to collect from too is the common reed. Now the common reed, I do have a few more sitting around at the back of me. The common reed has a really thick leaf, okay? And a really long stem. And like the kabunji is in the waterways, it's all edible. Okay, um, you can eat the raw, raw shoots when they're really um, nice and soft and green. You can just chew on them. Um, some people say it's kind of like, well, I don't really like eating them to be honest, but celery, a little bit more like celery, but I like eating the, the root system of the common reed because um, it was what I was actually given to eat when I was a, a young one. So um, it's really nutritious and full of carbohydrates. It's a little bit starchy and leaves a, a little bit of a flowery aftertaste, but um, it's quite delicious. But the story behind um, this common reed is behind me, I've got some beautiful river reeds because our women used to make beautiful adornments. Um, so our plants not only gave us, you know, the resources for food and to nurture ourselves and medicines, but also to, to adorn them. So um, just at the back here of me, I've got a beautiful river reed necklace um, that I've made in, um, in respect and honour of my ancestors, my, my matriarchs. So the common reed also too has a beautiful leaf that again, you can actually split and you can actually weave baskets with. So everything was utilised. Another beautiful weaving, and this is one that I always say, oh, you've got to grow it. You've got to grow it. It's amazing because we are getting onto the flowers now. Now, if anyone's read um, Bruce Pascoe's Deep, uh, Dark Emu, I was actually the one that was sharing with Bruce the traditional techniques and, um, and plant uses. So um, I didn't get any acknowledgement in his book, but that's okay. Uh, we're still friends. Wink, wink, nod, nod. And, um, but we do share similar stories, all right? Now, um, when I actually sat down and I'd done a facilitated a, a little workshop, Bruce actually came on board and I actually showed him, um, you know, the 40 years, um, I won't give my true age away, but the 40 years um, that I've actually been processing and making out of kangaroo grass, wallaby grass, dancing grass, lamandra, um, the wattles, uh, and yeah, I think that's all I make, yeah. Yeah, that's all I make flour out of. So, um, you know, by, by sharing that story with, with him, um, he's taken it to a new level and said it hasn't been done for over 200 years, but I, I've kept that tradition going. And I was actually shown by a few elders, um, you know, when I was eight years old, even younger, I think it was. So, um, so this is the lamandra, and this is getting onto the flower. So the lamandra is picked, and while, while us um, women would harvest the lamandra, you can see it's quite long because it is for weaving baskets. Okay, so weaving baskets, all right, is something that we do. So this is a lamandra one here. Okay, so there's a lamandra one. All right, so basket weaving, all right, our dilly bags. The reason why um, I'm showing you this is because this is a technique that I don't really share with many people, but it's actually how I separate this, the, um, the pods, the seeds from the pods when I go harvesting. So I'm gonna show you that technique in a minute. So the lamandra here, you can actually pull it out and the white part there, you can actually eat, that's edible. And that can sustain your energy, where well, you have to have about three or four, but um, it can sustain your energy up to four and a half hours because of the high carbohydrate um, 
level. So it's actually better than having a big, big bowl of potatoes and stuff if you had a workout or something like that. So by munching on the base of the lamandra, okay, and this is what our women used to do. We used to chew on the lamandra while we split all the leaves and then hung it out to dry and process to weave our baskets. Because our baskets, okay, I'll use this one. Our baskets with the lamandra, there's different species again, but with the lamandra, you get flowering heads, okay? It's also known as a spiny head of mat rush because they do have spikes or spines coming out. There's different species and there's male and female. Now, um, the male, believe it or not, the, flat, the flowering one is a female. The male one stays dormant until, and believe it or not, it's really crazy because he actually gets, um, here they are, uh, these. So the flowering, the flowering, and then you get these little balls here, these little husks, I call them. Inside those little husks are little, fine, beautiful, clear seeds. Now, if you get enough seeds, and probably oh, two or three plants will get you one kilo of flour. Okay, once you get these little seeds, right, I normally get my grinding stone. I put the seeds on. And then I grind them up and they do, they do get a little bit um, mushy at sometimes because you, sometimes um, they, might, they might need to be dried out a little bit, but I don't want to dry them out too much. So um, if you use it straight up, if you grind them straight up, you are going to find that they're going to be like a macadamia nut. They're going to go a bit mushy. So you want to dry them out just a little bit, but not too much. And then you put them on your grinding rocks if you don't have grinding rocks you might have a mortar and pestle um, or otherwise a food processor but i try and keep it traditional so um yeah by grinding those up then i put it in a container then i like to make make multi-grain bread so i've got my lamandra seeds and then what i love to do and i love to do this with people and is to actually forage the wattle seeds so there's um golden wattle uh, silver wattle, blackwell wattle, black wattle, coastal wattle. There's numerous wattle trees out there, but only some are edible, okay? The other ones can be quite to toxic, but some too can actually be like a little bit yucky to some people's palates. It, it just depends on what, what flavours you really like. So I've got a, a few different species here, and you can see inside that you can see inside the little pod there. See the little black seeds there? Okay, that's what we need to extract. And unfortunately, um, I haven't sent out any packs for you to do this because it is really um, a great insight to actually um, learn how to pop them out with your finger, but also how to shake and watch the seeds drop down into another bowl through, through the weave basket. So my grandmothers used to hang a dilly bag or a balang bag, okay? A balang around, so a balang mangang, and that was a weaved, basket carry basket around their necks it was a little bit more oval shape and they would strip the um seeds off the wattle trees and then shake it around shake it shake it shake it shake it and then they fall out into um, a coolamon and then cleaned and then basically straight up onto the grinding stone and made to for flour now i can't cook today unfortunately but um but what i normally do is uh once i have got all the flour that's a wattle seed flower there. Okay, it's light in colour and you can still see a little black black spots there. But by just adding a little bit of emu egg or, um, or a normal chook egg, um, I normally, I don't use the oak, I use the white. Okay, and you just mix it, mix this in, all right, with a little bit of water, probably a tablespoon of water, no more, no less. All right, and then you make up little balls and push them down. I do everything on the coals of my fire, but I do actually have an oven now, so I have been testing that. But you can actually put it in the oven for about 10 minutes and then pull it out and you've got beautiful little um, natural native wattle seed bread. Okay, it's not like yeast, it doesn't really rise much, but it's dense in, in um, flavour and taste as well. So it's like, um, yeah, it's, it's quite a heavy little, little pancake, I call them little Johnny Cakes. Um, but there's nothing more that I like to do is um, squeeze a pig face. Pig face have, um, oh yeah, pig face there. Pig face have, and there's different species of this, they have fruit, all this is edible, but pig face have a fruit 
and um, and you can actually twist off the end and squeeze it out and drop that onto your um on your little cake and you can have a little much on that and then while you're eating you kind of go oh gee I wouldn't mind a coffee like yeah well that's easy because I normally get people to extract those little black seeds again so I normally get them to extract all the little black seeds and in wet paper bark in wet paper bark we put all the little wet seeds in we wrap up the wet paper bark we get a long strip of lemongrass. Here it is, lemongrass. Long strip, this is a flowering bit of lemongrass. So what I normally do is I normally pull, pull that down, pull the flower off. That's our string. So around the wet paper bark, we tie our native lemongrass around it. The little seeds are inside. Put into the coals of the fire. You'll hear it all crackle around the outside. The lemongrass will actually burn off and you know it's ready because you hear a pop, 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 just like popcorn going off in a microwave and you know your wattle seeds are cracked open. You pull it out with two sticks, cool it down, open up your paper bar, there's your roasted wattle seeds. Tip them onto your grinding stones, grind them up and then what have you got? Ooh la la. You got roasted wattle seed okay so just put in hot water with that little bit of la, uh, soy soy milk i love soy milk um with that you've got a beautiful beverage but you can also have it cold as well so you can actually make it like a um iced roasted wattle seed chocolate because it is like tastes like chocolate and coffee so it's a mochaccino i call it so um if you do get online and order order something, please order roasted wattle seed. You'll never look back because not only can you have it in a hot drink, but all your sweets and savory foods. This is why I've got hardly any left. I've got to restock this because a tablespoon goes into everything. Every night, everything, everything, everything. I just slap it in. Even meat rubs. It, oh, it's just, it's endless, okay? So the foods that I'm going to show you today, you can just mix and match and experiment. Experiment with your plants. If you do end up getting some, buying some from the native plant nursery, um, you know, you don't have to have, you know, 300 hectares or two acres or, you know, you might just have the tiniest little, you might not even have a bloody garden, you know, I don't know. But um, inside, you can grow it inside, you can, you can grow it in your workplace. No one's going to care. Oh, not that you're at work anyway, but you know what I mean. It's, um, but this is um, some nut dukkha with the waffle seed. So that's kind of a mixture of um, everything and anything, macadamias and um, yeah, all different bit, bit of bush type of spices with a bit of roasted wattle seed and, um, and grounded wattle. So you can kind of, you know, mix and match and make some delicious types of, um, yeah, dukkhas too. Mm. I just wish everyone could smell all this because it just smells absolutely divine. I just love it. So another, I'm sorry I keep chopping and changing from one thing to the other. Oh, actually, I'm going to show you this because this is really cool. Does anyone know what that is? Does anyone know what that is? Does anyone know what that is? Sap. Resin? Yeah, it's wattle sap. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> it's wattle sap resin. Um, you can pick it off and you can eat it. Right, it's just like bush tuck, tuck a toffee, all right, but also too. And I've got a whole dish here, and you can see I've even pulled out the beautiful crystal you know, the crystal dish because I've actually foraged some this morning. And what I'm going to do for a little tasty treat for myself later after this soon, I'm going to put a bit of hot water over the top and it's going to start to expand and it's going to become like a jelly. And then what I'm going to do is make myself up a little bit of mountain pepper ice cream and put it on top and have it as my little afternoon treat because it's edible. Okay. And it's really, really good for you. Again, antiviral and antibacterial. And if you do have like, um, you know, um, a, say, uh, you know, pulpy ulcers or any, anything to do with your digestive system or stomach lining, this actually, um, it actually sticks to your stomach line, so it gives it that extra um, coat. And it's also to um, uh, um, like a barrier for Crohn's disease and irritable bowel syndrome. So I found my, some of my clients actually come to me and say, look, I've got Crohn's or I've got irritable bowel, um, you know, inflammatory diseases. Um, I always say, look, let's soak this, um, 
eat some and then see here you go. And they're like, oh, I don't really want to eat it because I know that I'm going to go to the toilet a bit later. I said, no, because what it does is it actually sticks to your line and it coats it. Then you can eat your normal food and it's not going to irritate it. So it is act like an active barrier. So, and um, I'm doing also too. So what, what I do tell you today is all the truth because it's, um, it's all been sci scientifically approved and, um, and is being investigated at the moment because I'm working with um, Macquarie University. So, you know, I, I teach at all different unis as well about the medicinals and they're doing scientific research now. So hopefully we will have some, some of these things in the pharmacy in the, in the near future. So what will that? Also too, um, when it's really gooey, like you can see how it's really sticky, like it's really sticky there, okay, really sticky. Um, ladies, you can actually put some around and uh, wait till it dries and then strip your eyebrows for eyebrow shaping. You don't need to go to the saloons anymore, um, or salons, not saloons, what am I talking about? Um, yeah, uh, what I used to do with my brother, I used to take him out bush and uh, we camp overnight. And when he was asleep, I used to coat his eyebrows with um, this sticky sap and poor bugger. Um, yeah, he'd wake up in the morning and find that he had something really hard to pull it and the hair came came off too, but he's um, he's okay. He, he recovered from that. So um, also too, any, any school teachers or anything, um, yeah, as I said, not only can you eat it, but you can actually make glue and resin, you know, for, um, yeah, forget the PVA glue, use a wattle sap because it sticks to everything and anything. So quite, quite sticky there. So um, I used to, when I was younger, get the wattle sap off the tree and put it onto a stick. And um, I used to put it, put the wattle sap stick near an ant's nest. And this is what you're gonna be doing for me, okay? This is an activity that you're gonna do and you're gonna to to send me all the photos because I wanna see it because it's hilarious. I want you to go and get a bit of wattle sap off the tree, stick it on the end of a stick, put it in an ant's nest and collect all the little ants, okay? And then bring it back, put it in the fridge, let the sap and the ants like cool down, then tap, tap your um, wattle sap out into a bowl and all the little ants bums will drop off and then you're gonna get your finger, lick your finger, scoop up the ants bums and eat them. And it's like a little burst of, um, of mint come out into your mouth. So ants are edible. You know those little black ones that you might put ant red out for? Don't. Um, scoop them up and, um, and yeah, and eat them because they're just delicious and they're high in protein as well. And as I said, it's, it's not just about medicines and bush plants. It is about bugs. And I'm starting to get out there into the crazy world of bugs, okay? I've been doing this as a kid, but um, these are, are char-grilled, um, crickets. So I have cricket and mealworm farms. Uh, so there's some beautiful crickets, legs and wings and everything. Beautiful, tasty. Um, I'm going to give um, someone a cricket when I see you in person. So then, you know, you can really say, yes, Cassie, it was delicious. But these are actually coated. Um, I've actually got uh, finger lime, finger lime and um, some wattle sap resin that they've been soaking. And then I just basically, um, yeah, put them in the fridge and, and then cook them with the mealworms though. And I'm sorry, I don't have any here because I ate them all last night. But um, the mealworms, I normally purge them. So if you've got pet, does anyone have pet lizards? Oh, perfect. So you, you know about the mealworms you can get from the pet shop? Oh, great. Tess is onto it. She's going to do this now. Well, sharing's caring, okay? And your pets do like to share their food. So... Um, I'm just going to choke now. So with the mealworms from a pet shop, uh, tip some into a um, into a, a sifter and get rid of all the uh, what's it called the um, sawdust. Okay, you get those mealworms and you put them into a jar, right? Just say, um, yeah, just just say, okay. Put put your mealworms into a jar and with nothing else, and you purge them for two days. So basically, you're starving those mealworms. All of a sudden, you'll see all the dust, the mealworm dust, that's its insides coming out. So you purge them. You, the dust sits down the bottom of the jar. Then what you do is you um, put them in some water, okay? And you just give them a nice clean, okay? So a bit of a wash. Put them on um, paper towel and dry them out, pat them dry. And then you're going to put them into another jar, right? And you might decide to put some um, bush tucker, some nice cinnamon myrtle leaves 
in that, in that jar or some lemon myrtle or some river mint, um, something that they can have a nibble on because what you're gonna do with those purged mealworms now, they're starving. So Tess, you're gonna put them into the jar, chuck a couple of beautiful native plant leaves in. They're gonna go yum, 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 eat, 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 yum, yum, yum. They're gonna fill up their little bodies with that bush tucker plant that that's gonna carry. It's, they're gonna become a vessel for you, okay? For your tasty little protein treat. Then what you're gonna do, once, it, once they've done that, you'll know again, because you can see them, they actually go from a, a caramel color to um, a greeny color. Then when they're that, you put them in the freezer, okay, and stun them so they're not wriggling around anymore. Pull them out, put them on a baking tray, baking paper, turn the oven on to 180, slap them in for about 10 minutes, roast them, pull them out, cool them down, bag them up, chuck them in your pocket. You've got a beautiful bush tucker treat. Amazing, okay? So, and, and like my budgie, it goes crazy. Every time I pull out the mealworms, we were having a feed here last night. So yeah, it's uh, pet shops do come in handy and they do sell crickets too. So you can do the same thing with that, but um, that's only for the adventurous, which I know Tess, you're onto it. I can see it. You're ready for it, aren't you? I know. So another thing that I really love to um, use in my bush tucker is, and with, with mealworms too, is this. Okay, this is a native wild river mint, all right? And it, it is, a, it's just a massive um, uh, ground covering, okay? Obviously, river grows all through the rivers. When you do maybe go down to a river um, and you might smell a peppermint, you go, oh, that smells like, this smells, something that smells like steaming. It could actually be the wild river mint. Now, sorry, it's a bit droopy, but when you do pick it fresh, it does not last long, okay? Unless you keep it in water, um, yeah, it just basically goes droopy and it will start to dry out. But that's okay. You can actually hang it upside down, dry it out. Again, strip all the little leaves off, put it on your on your roast lambs or your chicken. Um, add it into your stuffing, into the chicken. It is unbelievable. Sweets and savouries, again, you can't go wrong. But what I do when I do camps for children, always carry river mint because the kids forget to brush their teeth or sometimes they even forget to bring their toothbrush and toothpaste. So I've always got river mint because when you pick off a leaf and you chew it, it actually cleanses your mouth, gives you fresh breath, cleans your teeth because it removes plaque, okay? And it also um, relieves uh, tonsillitis or sore throats and coughs and colds. So it is a powerful um, plant, the river mint. Also too, by rubbing between your thumb and finger, okay, just giving it a little rub like that, okay, releases the oils again, inhale migraines, headaches. I sometimes just rub it over my forehead or my temples because the smell, just like peppermint oil, okay, relieves those um, headaches and tensions even at the back of your neck and it just it's really calming, relaxing. Nausea as well, if you're ill travel sickness, always have a bit of uh, wild river mint, whether it's dried or fresh. What I normally do, when I do workshops, I always have cuttings. And I say after my workshops, anyone can take whatever off my table because I'm not taking it home, you know, meaning that the bush tucker plants itself. And normally what people will do then is go home, fill up a little glass, okay, of water and keep Keep your wild river mint in that water because in a week's time, it's actually going to form a new root system. And the roots will just start building up, building up, and then you can plant it in a pot and grow it yourself. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a really beautiful mint to have. It's also um, really good for mozzies as well. So having it, I've got it at the front door here. I've got big pots at the back door. I've got it all through my garden. So whenever I do my bush tucker, you know, planting, I've always got river mint to, to peel off, rub over my arms um, and have a munch on as well. Uh, this one here is another mint, um, a very popular mint at the moment. I've noticed that native plant nurseries are really stocking up on this one because it's our native thyme. So it's just got the most beautiful fragrance. It's just really, really lovely. It's got beautiful little um, in season when it, when it comes out in flower, it's got beautiful little purple flowers, but the beautiful little rounded leaf um, is a real delight. Again, just inhaling it. It's, it's not as powerful as a river mint, but it's just got a beautiful dainty smell. It's nice and gentle and calming. And I love to use the native thyme 
or the oval mint in um, iced teas in summertime. So Christmas is always, everyone books in here at Christmas because they know they're going to get something unusual and also too, they're going to be blessed with the beneficial, um, you know, uh, native plants. So um, yeah, you have to get some native thyme. Um, native basil is absolutely lovely as well and native sage. Um, I just didn't have time to go out onto my property and, and collect all that because I've got so much here to talk about as it is. As I said, I do have 290 plants um, in front of me. I've got probably about 80 at the moment. So I'm going to be going through a few of those with you. So I did mention before about the purging of the mealworms. They do love cinnamon myrtle. So cinnamon myrtle, um, a family member of a lemon and aniseed myrtle, uh, really, really delicious. Um, Mainly, mainly I use this in um, my native chai tea. I love to make chai teas and, and hot chocolates and things. So I like to um, mix this with the native rosella plant. So the rosella plant, uh, well, the wild hibiscus plant, the, um, the what do I also use? Oh, strawberry gum. I use some dry uh, river mint. Um, I've got emu bush peppermint gum, uh, the wattle seeds and the... Um, cinnamon myrtle. So them all blended together actually gives a really empowering um, chai tea and it's probably one of my workshop favourites that I like to actually boil up and, and give people a little taste of. So it is very nurturing. But again, all these plants that I'm showing you today, you can have them in sweets or savouries. You just have to, you just have to basically open up your mind and go out to the native plant nursery, buy some, buy the bush tucker, I think they've got them at Bunnings too now and, um, and grow them in your own area because I always find when you grow them yourself, you actually get this connection and you get a more identity and understanding of the plant. So it kind of builds your knowledge. And then when people come around and go, oh, I love that smell, what's that? And you go, oh, well, this is this and, and this is beneficial for this. And you kind of start ranting, but it's really interesting. You're going to get people on board and this is what I want to see. This is about the sharing process. Um, you know, I, I propagate and grow so many. And as I said, with my workshops, I love nothing more to give, give away little gift packs to everyone when they leave, you know, take this home and little tubers and stuff. And um, so you can nurture yourself in beautiful bush tucker plants. So, but if you can't actually, um, if you're not a green thumb or, or such, um, you know, you can go online and buy these beautiful products, um, full leaf or in spice mode too, and just try them. And, and as I said, experiment, you might go, oh, what's it, oh, aniseed myrtle, what am I going to use this for? Chuck it in your pancake mix, mix it up. Hello, it's beautiful, delicious. Um, you know, it's, it's totally up to the individual and, and their tastes. And, and if you've got kids and they hate eating, you know, they don't, yeah, like vegetables and vitamins and stuff like that. Well, I've got a ripper one ripper one that wins them over all the time and they don't realize that they're having basically 50 different types of um, medicine in one hit and this is called the mountain pepper now you can see here how it's quite pink because th this is just a cutting I, I can actually not believe it that i actually got a mountain pepper um cut off a branch because what i normally do is i normally just cut off or you know cut off a little little branch I stick it in water and then I use one leaf like that, one leaf, and I pop it into my into my cup, pour boiling water over it, chuck a couple of Earl Grey's, because I'm an Earl Grey addict, Earl Grey um, tea bags, a scoop of honey and soy milk, and hello, like you're having basically anti-cancer, antibacterial. I call this my coronavirus vaccine, but no one wants to listen to me, so mm, whatever. But um, this is amazing. Any infections, um, I've had four years of cancer. I always tell my personal journey because I want people to believe. Um, this is where the Macquarie University, they do have my actual, my, um, my tissue samples from my, my three surgeries that I've had. And I basically kill myself. So this is my chemo as well. So um, it actually shrinks cells, cancer cells. So I do get a lot of inquiries about it and I do get people to actually purchase their own. You have to have a male and female to actually get the peppercorns but it's all beneficial. So just from a little cutting, I actually started to get a root system and I just basically changed the water every single day just to keep it nice and hydrated and, and because I'm not ready to, yet to put this into the ground because I kind of, in a way, don't want to lose it. It looks really pretty on my windowsill. But, um, but those leaves, if you bite into that, it is really hot. 
it is a mountain pepper after all, okay? It is really hot, but the benefits are unbelievable. The kids will not eat pepper at all, okay? Um, I know I have trouble um, with my little fella. He just like, uh, uh, I'm not having nothing. So what I do is I actually dry out and I've got a whole heap here. I actually um, do a little harvest and I collect some of the leaves, not everything, not all though, but I collect all the leaves and I dry them out. And then in a food processor, you blend it down into fine, oh, where are we? Oh, there we go. Then we blend it down into fine powder like this, okay? It smells divine. I'm, I'm not joking. It is unbelievable. The smell is beautiful, right? Get a tub of ice cream. Um, obviously, let it defrost a little bit until it's like, ugh. Stick, stick basically, um, or say, well, that would be about two. Say, I would stick about three or four tablespoons in because I really like it. And mix it around and chuck it back in the freezer and refreeze it. Then when the kids come home and they want ice cream, they're gonna have mountain pepper ice cream because they're having anti-cancer, antibacterial, antioxidants, vitamins, minerals. You can even look at this online if you don't believe me. It has been scientifically proven, this one here. And um, the mountain pepper is one of my favorites. So um, yeah, by, by just having that beautiful ice cream, it, it's um, people go, oh God, it's pepper with ice cream. That's crazy. But I said, it is absolutely to die for. It is amazing, okay? And the kids love it. Every time I have my, my girlfriend's little ones come around, they say, Auntie Cass, can we have mountain pepper ice cream? And it's like, yep, not a problem. And then I stick some ribbon meat on top as well. And so they're getting added extra things, but it's introducing um, the spices and the flavors to them as well. That's really, really important. And with the, um, with the mountain pepper, male and female you need, um, you get these beautiful, delicious, delectable, delightful um, peppercorns. And these peppercorns, they are hot. Now, with me, um, when I actually got diagnosed with cancer, I, I was actually very, like, not stressed at all because I've been, take, I've been eating these for, for years. But I don't chew them. I just basically um, mm, down it with a bit of water. Actually, I'm just going to have a bit of my cup of tea, sorry. Mm. Oh, that's good. So um, downing one of these little peppercorns every day, okay? It's just like taking a tablet, but you're just taking a peppercorn, all right? You can actually put these peppercorns into a pepper grinder and just grind it over your food every day, the same benefits. But this is what actually started the cell reduction. So everything just basically shrunk and just turned back on itself and ate itself away. And this is why um, last year I went up to the uni, actually got me, flew me up there because my doctor um, at the Peter Mac actually said, I have never seen anything like this before. We need to have an investigate and get all the scientists. So we had scientists from England. We had scientists from the USA that actually met with me and another crew. So there's 15 of us all up. It actually got filmed. It's going to be a documentary about it. And they actually are processing um, the mountain pepper with the strawberry gum and the Gumby Gumby, and they're processing because it all draws out toxins and, and basically kills cancer cells. So this is just gonna be unbelievable when this all comes out. And I'm gonna be really, really proud to say that I was a test dummy for it. So um, yeah, that's the mountain pepper. Now, I'm just gonna stop for one second. And if, there's, if anyone wants to unmute, to ask me anything at the moment, um, what I've just talked about, because I've still got heaps to talk about. But if anyone wants to unmute and ask me a couple of questions, that will be great. And then I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions too. So is there any questions at the moment that anyone's got for me? So there was a question in the chat function. Um, are you able to supply some links um, in the chat for genuine sellers? Yes, definitely I can do that. Yeah, I can send I can send them um yeah, I can send them forward and then it can be sent out. So um yeah, I normally go with Outback Pride, there's Indigi Earth, um they're they're amazing. Uh there's uh Taste of Australia because they, they support uh when I was working with Mark Olive, the indigenous chef, um yeah, his his um uh, sister Lisa, uh yeah, we actually um yeah, he actually supports a lot and for the Koori youth as well down here in Victoria. So they've actually got another farm happening here in Victoria. So that's really good. So I can pass on some links. Yep, definitely. Awesome. Thank you. If you pass it on to me, I'll send it through to everyone that's asked for it. Wonderful. Yeah. Is there any, any other questions before I start asking you? 
Yeah, Tess. Um, I was wondering what species of wattles um, have the, the tastiest seeds? Um, I, would, I would say the, well, my, fa my personal favourite would have to be the blackwood wattle. Um, that they're so popular and it's all about identity again. Okay, so this is a black, this is what the blackwood wattle leaf looks like. Okay, it's round, it's a little bit flat and, and it will have curly, curly pods on it. You'll see, and then they have the beautiful arrow um, that, that's, that's black wattle seed there, sorry. See the little orange parts there around it? Um, I always, what I normally do is when I do de-seed the pods, I clean the beautiful arrow off because that, that, um, that cover, that little yeah, orange part that covers around the seed, the ants love it. And this is a little scientific story that I love to tell in schools is that when the big fires come through, um, you know, obviously the ants will come out and they, they love the arrow. So they'll actually click the, um, the orange part around the seed and they'll drag the seed down into the ants nest with them and put it into their little, little chamber or food chamber. And when the big fires come through, okay, the ants obviously they're underground, but it all gets heated up and that, that actually heats up the seeds and, open, and cracks them to um, regenerate. So then when, when you actually go out um, after a fire, you'll see these ants nests and out of the ants nest, you'll actually, you'll actually see um, a, a wattle tree growing out of the ants nest. So it's kind of like a, yeah, it's a cycle there. So, you know, we, we don't eat all ants, okay? But yeah, the coastal wattle um, or the black wattle is probably my favorite. The bark and, um, and the, um, the branches are used also to in tools, clapsticks, um, and also too for soaking for medicine. And you can see here, this is a silver wattle. It's a bit um, dandy at the moment, a little bit dead. But um, when those, you can see those pods are still green, I actually steam them. I actually steam those green pods because they taste like beans, but not all of them are edible as well. So you just gotta be mindful of that. But yeah, probably, yeah, the, the black wool wattle. So um, if, you, if you check that one up, you can, yeah, um, be able to see it, what it looks like. Yeah, so is there anyone else that wants to ask a quick question? Yes, Vanessa. Um, the the tree sap, well, that, that's from, which wattle was that from? So that's from the black wattle, okay, the black well. wattle, yeah. So the black wood, the black wood has, um, so you're going you're gonna to come across a wattle tree and the, you'll see this leaf here, it's all about identity and it's got this really rustic, uh, real dark brown, um, sometimes blacky bark that peels off. You can actually peel that bark off, boil it in water and if you've got a, um, an abscess in your mouth or even if your child has had dental work and got braces, gargle that, spit it out. Um, after about half an hour doing that, clear, gone. But the, um, yeah, this is the, the black, the black wattle, not the black wood, the black wattle, because they've got all different barks and it is all about identity. The mm -hmm. silver wattle also has sap coming out too, which mm -hmm. is quite tasty and it's a lot clearer. But I, I just, I've always just found that the black wool wattle, um, oh sorry, the black wattle has, has a richer texture. And, um, and also too, if, um, like my grandson actually um, slit his finger open with a pocket knife the other week when we were out on country. And because it, it slipped right down here, you can actually rub the sap straight over that wound, okay, because it acts as a band-aid. So it'll hold the wound together, stop the bleeding, and it's antibacterial, antiviral. So you're not going to get no germs. And then once it dries up, you just leave it on. And then if you know that it's, it's not too looking too good, or it's looking actually better, um, yeah, you can actually wash it off with, with warm water and then reapply again. So just like a Band-Aid, you just keep reapplying it until it's healed. So it, it has so many benefits. It's, the the wattle is probably my favourite. So, um, so I'm, I am going to attack Shane, okay? I know, yep. Because this is something that I just want to hear from you, okay? Something totally not about plants. But what does NAIDOC Week mean to you, Shane? I think um, to me, it, there's, there's always something to learn. Like, um, you know, there's so many languages and, and um, um, different communities across Australia. I grew up in Tweed Heads on the, near the Gold Coast in northern New South Wales. And um, um, certainly the, the, the way that they sort of celebrate culture there is um, different to, to here. But um, 
I don't know, just it's it's an exploration, I guess. That's sort of the, the beauty of it. This, you know, music and certainly your your talk today is something totally new for me. Um, and uh, especially starting with so much language as well. Um, I was really impressed with um, with you um, using and explaining language. So yeah, to me, it's like, um, it, it's about sort of exploring indigenous culture and history. Um, and it's pretty cool. Like it's, it's very interesting. Yeah, oh, thank you for that. That's really good. And, and that's really important because I'm trying to revive my culture, my, my language for, for the youth, because I do so much youth work and um, I'm just not a bush tucker woman. I, I do everything. What, whatever I can do, I, I can do. Because I don't know how long I've got on this on this earth. But I want to make sure that I leave I leave a legacy, but also too that I'm being a good role model. But not just for Koori kids, but for non-Indigenous people to learn as well. And to pass that knowledge on and grow with it. Because a lot of people go, oh, you know, white fella, white fella. But my mum's white, you know. Um, I wouldn't be here without white settlement, you know. I have to acknowledge that as well. Um, but I do, and I, I foremost walk in my ancestors' footprints because that's what I was born to do. And, like, I've done so many things over my lifetime. I've been a music teacher. I've been an ambulance officer. I've been with the Koori Mentoring Police Unit. I, I've done so much, but this is the path that I love the most is connecting with people, no matter what age or where you're from. I don't care. I just want to be able to express and share my passion for my, you know, um, for what I do and for, you know, from my people. So, um, you know, passing on knowledge, I, I just love it. So thank you for giving me that insight because um, with, with the language, I'm the, I'm the lead dancer and a linguist in, in my tongarong. So, um, you know, I have to work with language and I sing songs all the time. And when I do my weaving and when I do workshops, I actually do um, love the whole group to sit around. And I, I teach them the Yirung dance, the Yirung song that I have permission to share with non-Indigenous people. Yeah. And then um, th they learn a dance and then they take something else back with them and they feel, and, you know, we do a smoking and we, you know, I'll teach them a few things. Um, I actually love adult groups because um, I can actually teach them a little bit of naughty words too along the way. You know, it's, um, yeah, no, I'm allowed to do that, but, you know, but um, I have to be professional. But um, but it is is a fun thing. So, um, you know, when I say hello, or even you can start start to do it now. When you write an email, forget saying dear Cassie or hello Cassie or, you know, but say wawa, W-A-W-A, wawa means hello, means wow. hello in Coolum. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's, it's just, um, you know, Gilbrook means respect. I always say Gilbrook lyric, um, Gilbrook lyric big, and that means respecting your ancestors country and Gilbrook lyric warang, always respect your ancestors tongue, your elders tongue. So whenever I teach children, I always say now, my name's Cassie, a lot of kids end up calling me Auntie Cassie. That's cool. I don't care. Um, but, you know, I always say, you know, lyric, uh, yeah, the Gilbrook lyric, uh, warang, always respect your elders' tongue and you've got to be listening. So I try and carry that forward. And I've always been asked to, you need to do a book. You need to write a book. Yeah, I've already done that. But but it's, it's still sitting there. It's not published yet, you know, because I'm not ready to do that because it's the oral, the talking, the connecting. You know, if I write a book, no one, no one will get me for these workshops because they've already read in a book. You know, I want to be able to connect with people. And, and this is what I'm actually struggling with is this internet computer stuff and being inside because normally I'm out Outside and I'm pulling people through the, you know, the trails and up steep cliffs and, you know, coming across snakes and goannas and everything. So I'm struggling with that. But thank you for your insight. That was really, that was really nice. And has anyone else got any other questions before I continue on to the journey? No? Okay. Oh, sorry. Yep, Vanessa. Um, uh, I'd love to um, have a chat with you. At some point, I teach the Koori VCAL unit at um, at Melbourne Poly, so I would love to discuss potential um, workshops with you, perhaps for next year. Love it. Yep, send me an email. I love it. Definitely. Right. Yep, we'd be wonderful. And and that's the thing. Like you know, I I tr I try and give as much as I can give. I I am a busy woman, but they always say, and my mum's always said, you ask a busy woman or a busy man to do something, they're going to get it done. So, um, you know, in saying that, 
I, I will try and answer, you know, as many things, you know, if you do, do want um, more information about what I'm discussing here, you know, you can email, you can Facebook me, you can Instagram message me. I do have about 150 messages I do have to go through at some stage because of yesterday's, because I did this yesterday and it was so popular that I actually went over an hour, but it's okay. So it ended up being a three hour workshop and it turned out to be a, sorry. It was a three hour workshop, it ended up being a four hour workshop. But anyway, that's another story. So getting back to our plants, because I do have, um, and keep being mindful, I don't have that long. So this here, and you can grow this inland. If you go on the coast, okay, if you go on the coast, you're gonna find this plant everywhere. It's called Warrigal Greens. And again, it is about identity. Now, I have closed my windows a little bit. I do have a little bit of light coming in. I'm not sure whether you're gonna get it or not, but there's a little bit of sprinkly sparkly underneath the leaves. So there's a green, if you look underneath, it should actually glisten like glitter, okay, in the sun. There's little yellow flowers. You're going to be able to scrunch it up and straight away you're gonna smell spinach. It smells like spinach. So you know it's warrigal greens. There's also another different species like the bower spinach. But what I love to do the most, and I'm going to share this because this is one of the most popular things that everyone likes to know about. The bower spinach or the warrigal green spinach. Chop it up, take it home, put it in a pot of water, blanch it, so boil it up, strain it, okay, rinse it really well, put it into a bowl or a mortar and pestle, Go to the supermarket if you don't have macadamia tree, grab some macadamia nuts because they are the bomb, put it into your um, mix, uh, mash it up to make a pesto or even put it into your food processor, either way, um, but make a beautiful pesto, right? Put it in the fridge. Then if you live along the beach, right, go down to the beach and you're gonna find, you know the big bull kelp that comes up on, on the shores? Does everyone know the big bull kelp? You know, yep, yeah, okay. It's um, a little bit slimy, but you'll get used to it. Take your scissors, take a, a plastic bag, cut, cut some bull kelp, all right? Shake it, do not wash it, shake the sand off it, chuck it in your bag. You're, you're permitted, it's not illegal, you are permitted to get about one, one kilo, I think. But anyway, we're not here to wait. Just slap it in your bag, take it home, Get a clean cloth, okay, that hasn't been used for anything else, just a nice clean cloth and wipe it down. Wipe it down, you do not want to wet it yet. While it's still all nice and pliable, uh, cut st strips like pasta strips, right? Cut pasta, you can even chop it up if you want, whatever. Then you're gonna put that aside. You're gonna pull your pesto out, out of the fridge. So you've got your, your warrigal greens and your macadamias, pesto there. You're gonna boil up the pot. You do not need any salt in it. You're gonna boil up a pot of water, all right? No more than two minutes, okay? You're gonna get that bull kelp. You're gonna get that bull kelp like that, all right? And this is dry, mind you. You're gonna get the bull kelp. You are gonna pop it into your pot. No more, no less than two minutes, right? Pull it out, oh, sorry, tip, tip out the water, strain it straight into a bowl, put your pesto on top, put a bit of Parmesan cheese, sit down, it's the best Italian pasta, or actually, sorry, the best native Australian Italian slash Italian pasta dish you'll ever have, okay? It is unbelievable and so good for you. Now, I love cycling, right? I love hiking, I love my bike riding. Now, this is one for you guys that love to get out and about, right? So bull kelp again, dry it out like this. Now my daughter, she always takes the little piece of school and her friends are like cooked now, like they can't get enough of it. Um, so what you do is on hot days like today, take a little bit, share it with your friends. You're feeling a little bit dehydrated. Don't go to the chemist and get hydrolyte. You just suck on it. It's like, oh my God, that's so good. Mm, 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 mm -hmm. You just have to suck on it or even put it in your drink bottle because it's got magnesium, sodium, potassium, vitamin D. It is unbelievable. There's so many minerals just in that beautiful, you know, the, the kelp, uh, bull kelp that you just, why, why would you go to a, a supermarket or a chemist to get hydrolytes? It's um, beyond me. So even just put it into a bit of water, okay, it'll start to soften up again. 
Or even better, you got your mountain pepper in your pepper grinder. When your bulk help turns nice and hard and crispy, put it into your food processor, blend it up and tip it into your salt grinder and have your natural salt. Hello. Mm, salt and pepper. But that's not all. Oh, I love this. <gasps> We've got some here. Seaweed. Hello, seaweed. Yep, that's right. Take it home, rinse it out, sit it on paper towel, okay, and let it dry out. And that's another pasta dish there. This is what I'm having tonight. I've just dried mine out last night. So, hello. A little bit of hot water and I'm just going to put a little bit of a mix in with that. So, I'm probably going to add some um, pig face. Uh, where's the pig face? The pig, the pig face will actually go into that dish. So, it, it's all basically, um, you know, ocean coastal plants but you can grow them inland as well but pig face that has probably been oh that's been sitting in my bag because i normally nibble on it um for about two months it can just live out like this for two three months as is always say um have it have it in a little bit of um water and have it at your workplace and everyone goes oh that is such a cute little plant with little flowers and you start eating it and go it's all edible and it's really really good for you too but also too oh Oh, I've got a little paper cut on my hand. I've done it at the photocopier. Well, guess what? You've got this in your workplace, okay? Pick it off, squeeze out the juice, right? Rub it in and it fixes a paper cut, all right? Also too, um, sunburn, uh, you've got cracked lips, rub it over your lips, really soothing. It is like aloe vera, okay? There's so many different species of um, pig face, but the whole lot is edible. The stem, everything. So you can grow that bad boy out everywhere and, um, and it's gonna give you so much benefit. Um, especially eczema and mozzie bites too, if you're out in the bush um, or even along the coast uh, and you see the pig face, just, just pick it. We used to have it around our necks because there's different species and we used to call them sea apples because they crunched like an apple and tasted like the sea. But if they were tangy, you knew that a dog or a cat or someone has kind of um, done the naughty, yeah, bad juju for them, I say. Bad juju. So that's a little bit about our sea, um, sea salts. But also, to along the coast, you'll come across salt bush. Now, there's so many different species of salt bush too. And a lot of people say to me, oh, Cassie, um, let me... Oh, I forget where I put it now. I've got so much bush food, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but the salt bush, there's broadleaf salt bush, there's uh, ruby coastal salt, salt bush, there's so many different species of salt bush. Again, you can dry it out, you can chop it up and use it as salt. Uh, what I do like, and this is why it's all bent, okay, is I actually like to bend this in half. I like to add some lemon scented gum as well. Wrap that around. Ooh, and I do like to use a bit of strawberry gum and sometimes eucalyptus. Uh, tie it around with lemon grass, okay, and light it up and you've actually got a beautiful smudge stick to cleanse and, and do healing as well. So that's something that I do in ceremonies when I do that for um for one-on-one -on -one personal healings. Uh, also too, hang on, I'm just finding, oh, where is that? Two, two, two. Oh, if you could only see all this, it is unbelievable. Uh, oh, here they are. All right, now this one, I used to actually, when I was at high school, um, I used to get picked on a lot and um, and it was a little bit, a bit upsetting and it was mainly boys, believe it or not, um, because I used to be kind of like a tomboy and stuff like that. So I used to always go to this tree and this is a bit nasty, but I used to go to this tree and I used to actually um, get a stick. All right, I'll just get this. I used to get a stick. I used to go to this certain tree and I used to find these pods. Has everyone seen these pods before with those little things in it? They're called itchy bombs, okay? Well, I call them courage on, but they're itchy bombs. Now I have one here that I'm not gonna touch, but you can see the prickly little fibers, yeah? You put that down someone's pants and they're gonna have an itchy bum all day. So those boys, <laughs> um, probably still itching, but um, yeah, these are itchy bombs. So they do have fine little hairs. They have fine little hairs that are very, very, very itchy, hence why I'm not touching it. But believe it or not, the season is now. If you find a courage on tree around your area, 
you collect that, that they should be split and you, could, you will see all these little nuts in here. That's right, they're nuts. But down below is all the hairy irritating fibers that are attached to these nuts. So what you're gonna do when they're open, okay, you're gonna dig them out with a spoon or a stick, put them onto a baking tray and pop them in the oven for about 10 minutes. And that way, all the little irritating fibers burn off. Then you're gonna pull them out, you're gonna wash them really well, okay? So I normally wash them really well. And then between two pieces of, um, what's it called, the uh, paper towel, okay? Clean them, dry them, making sure that there is no little fibers and then have a taste. You crunch down, it is better than a picachio nut. Um, my, my dad's just, he just loves these. He always says, when are you making up those nut seeds for me? Because what I do is I put them in a jar and then I, I get the wild hibiscus flower, that's right, the wild hibiscus flower, and I dry that out to make my beautiful hibiscus salt. So I sprinkle that over the nuts and then you just got this beautiful salted nut, nut native nut. But also to the Currajon tree, down below, if you look down the bottom of the trunk, you'll see all these little saplings coming out. If you pull them out, uh, wash the roots and have a chew, it is unbelievable. It is so tasty. I bloody love it. I really do. And it's the same with the bulbine lid. You see these in the parks and at, um, you know, out the front of um, workplaces. Yep. Mm -hmm. These, when they come, got bulbine lids, when they come out in flower, and if you get your digging stick or a stick and dig about oh, 10 centimetres down into the earth, give it a little motion and slightly pull it up. You can, you can break off a couple of tubers and then replant it like I do, um, but you can break off a few tubers, wash it and have a munch on it. It is sweet, tasty. Um, it, people go parsnips, but it's not like a parsnip. It's just like a sweet, it's like a, a, a snow pea. It's got that real nice snow pea sweet taste. It's beautiful. Um, but they have to be in flower like this, and that's the time to collect them or harvest the roots. Same with the Mernon. Everyone talks about the Mernon, okay, the yam daisy. So easy. I've got six species. There's known only five, but I've actually got six species. And I grow, um, I've got basically oh, a quarter acre just dedicated to yams, okay. So I just plant them and then I do a big harvest because I like to do a big cook up at Christmas. So I normally do, do big harvests with chocolate lily, vanilla lily, bulbine lilies and the yams. And what I do is, um, you know, I aerate the soil. I normally wait till they come to seed. Okay, so they'll, they'll come to seed. I'll just use this as an example. So the flower goes, drops off and all of a sudden the seed appears. Now, if you aerate the soil, okay, aerate the soil, give it a little shake, pull it up, always make sure you tilt it down, tap the seeds into the aerated soil and then cover it over. And then off you go, that's gonna be the new life cycle for the, the yams or the bulbine leaves. And then what I normally do is I wash them up, I put them in wet paper bark, I soak my paper bark for a couple of hours, sometimes even overnight, just depending how long I'm gonna cook in the earth oven for. I dig my hole. I, I have another fire, so I have my fire, I get hot coals, I put the hot coals into my earth oven, put my wet paper bark, my lemongrass, my um, oh, strawberry gums, my mints, wh whatever flavours I feel like. Sometimes I chuck in, um, you know, the, the native um, uh, basils and uh, then I put the wet paper bark and then I put my meats and my, my foods, everything. So meats normally come up one end and the vegetables um, come up the other and then I roll them up and then I'll put the coals on top and just cook it like that. So um, just depending, but that's another story for another day when we can actually see each other face to face. I'd love to take you on that journey because there's so much to share and I'm still yabbering on. Um, there's, there's so much I've, and I know that I'm going to be, oh no, that's cool. I've got half an hour because we'll have about 10 minutes talky time again. But this one here, this is the peppermint gum. Now the peppermint gum, um, when I go up to Lake Ilden and I, I go up there a lot to do some hiking and, and work at Camp Jungai and, and the Marysville um, group there, I normally go up to um, a bit higher in country at Rubicon and there's a big massive row of peppermint gum trees like just right there. And you can, and it's beautiful after the first rain because you get that smell and the, oh, the beautiful, you know, the peppermint, you know, 
coming through with the rain. And even if it's just laying underneath on the, on the earth's floor, you just pick it up and you scrunch it and you just inhale it. And it, it's just something else. It's really amazing. But collecting the leaves and drying them out and just cutting them up makes a beautiful tea as well. So I love to um, put ants in the leaf for a tea because the ants bums believe it or not they they do taste a bit minty and when you when you actually it's funny because when you actually have the tea it actually enhances the flavor of the peppermint leaf so it's it's a really strange combination i know but as i said i like to experiment i like to be different and um i just like to play around with different flavors so the peppermint gum, um, and you'll know straight away, as I said, it is about identity. And unfortunately, I, I can't show you the, the big trees now. And, or I haven't done a PowerPoint because I do like just to be talking and have it that one-on-one. -on -one. But um, this is another one you might be familiar with. And I have to apologise because it's actually falling apart at the moment from yesterday. But can anyone tell me what that is? Unmute yourself and you can tell me. Thanks, yeah. Yeah, banksia. So the banksia flower, okay, you, you can get so many different species again, banksia flowers. You'll see these when you're walking around in people's gardens. I've got a neighbor, you just we don't don't mention them, okay, but um, he's a little bit grumpy. But he has a beautiful um, banksia tree at the front of his place. And I mean I've got a few here, but his are just extra special. I don't know what he does, but um yeah they're full of flavor so normally what i do is when i go and check the mail i walk past his house and i'll just have a little look around and i don't think he minds but and he knows i'm being there so i normally pick one off and i'll lick it straight up so i'll have a good old lick and um oh, someone's leaving early that's okay ciao ciao um and what i'll do is i'll actually lick lick all the um nectar off the banksia flower because it's it's a really nice tasty little tree um, but then I'll carry, carry it down to the mailbox and I'll, I'll talk to Don and collect my mail and I'll come back. And then if I do happen to have my drink bottle with me, I'll actually stick it into my drink bottle and soak it in my drink bottle. So when I get home and I might do a bit of gardening or do a Zoom, I've got my drink bottle with a Banksia flower in it. And then I can have a sip of it because what it is is Indigenous cordial. So the neck actually, you know, basically gets infused with the water to make a beautiful natural cordial and kids love it. Um, normally sometimes we'll, we'll have them, um, you know, in burls. Um, the coolamons and people, people go, oh, you know, uh, yeah, we put our, put our drinks in the cool. Well, no, because it doesn't hold much water. Okay. Uh, that's more of a food carrier, but in the burls, if you put a whole heap of the, um, the banksia flowers in the burls and soak them in um, water, you're going to have a beautiful, beautiful, um, tasty drink of an afternoon. And I just love it. But then when you've, when you've finished with having a drink, you still got it and it can last up to two months. And I do apologize because this one is probably that old. Okay. Um, I do have to get another one, but this one here, um, you jump in the shower. Okay. Cause you're not going to be licking it or soaking it anymore, but you jump in the shower and you can ac actually exfoliate your skin because it's all spiky. You've got to make sure it's really spiky. It can't be just like in flower because it's just too soft. It's got to be spiky. So exfoliating your skin with the beautiful Banksia flower um, not only gets rid of dead skin cells, but it also um, uh, hydrates and um, yeah, makes your nice skin soft and subtle. So just lovely. But then that's not all, okay? There's more, all right? So you've exfoliated your skin, you jump out of the shower, you dry off, you're drying your hair, and I'm not gonna do it because it's just gonna go everywhere. But your hair, you start brushing your hair, okay? Because it's so spiky, your hair has its natural oils. It still, believe it or not, on the inner, inner, cone it still does carry that beautiful nectar so or the oils so the oils of the banksia cone and the oils of your hair clamp together and they make it silky and smooth right yeah that's right it is amazing versatile flower thank you yes and this is what i want you to go out so i'm just reading the chat chat room i like it um so if you go out and you find yourself um banksia 
banksia flowers. Make sure that they're really spiky or really bristly. Um, but just hold up your nose to it and inhale it. You can smell it straight away. Like this hasn't lost its scent, but it is amazing. And then, believe it or not, you brush your hair, you brush your hair, it's silky smooth. It kind of straightens it as well if it's really curly, so it straightens it. But then when you do have your neck shower and you hop and you go, oh my God, it's like I've got froth coming out. What the, what's going on? It's actually shampoo and conditioner. So you'll actually notice that it will froth up a little bit. So I don't know what, chem, what, what the go is with the oils of the hair and, and the nectar, but something obviously just, it clings, makes it nice and silky and straight, but then when you wash it again, it actually froths up. So it's an amazing, uh, I just love it. And um, yeah, it's really, really good for, um, you know, kids that don't want to be brushing their hair all the time. I, I just love it, especially on camps again because um, it's a natural thing and they think it's great and all the, you know, the girls are loving it, but then the boys that have got these past dreadlocks and God knows what, they're actually doing it too. And yeah, so you can see Shane's already like, oh, I'm so going to get myself one of those. <laughs> yes, I know. So, um, you know, it's, it's just really, really, um, yeah, just really useful. And, and that's just like everything. It, it's all just, um, you know, um, just knowledge and knowing what to do with the, the plants. And even this one here, and I've got that in water, and you can see this is dipping down, right? So I'm not sure whether you can see the colour of that. See the colour, how it, see all the nectar? So bottle, see all the nectar floating around? That's my tasty treat. That's my drink. So by soaking the bottle brush, um, or, or grevilleas are the same, even some water flowers you can even just munch on. But I always say to people to, just be mindful of allergies, okay? You, you've, got to be, you've got to be so careful because not, I can't say that anyone will be, you know, allergic to, you know, all these things here, but if, if you're a little bit in doubt, okay, and you go, oh, I don't know about that, always get your plant, you rub it on your wrist and then on your inner, inner elbow, okay? Rub it there, wait about 10 minutes, all right, I know you might be hungry for it, but you just got to wait. If by any chance it starts to have little red welts, you ain't going to be eating it or consuming it, are you? No, you're not even going to be touching it because if you do happen to eat it and you've got little red welts, you'd be stupid, but you're going to have an anaphylactic reaction and then you're going to have to have an EpiPen and you're probably going to have to go to hospital, okay? So always be really mindful that if you're not sure um, don't don't even go there. And it's the same when you're out in the wild. When I do my survival camps, I basically take everyone on a big trail and everything. You know, it's a two night camp, and, and I educate people in the identity, the uses, the methods, and the traditions, and the medicines as well. But I always say, if you're unsure, just do not go there. If a bird and you know animals are, are having a munch at that doesn't mean it's for human con you know, consumption. It could actually be toxic to you. And that's where the story of the um, kangaroo apple, I always highlight the kangaroo apple. Um, this is just a, a little, oh, it's a little bit dead. It's got a little purple flower and you'll see this around. And normally the leaves, this is just the top part of the tree, but normally the big established leaves looks like a kangaroo paw. So hence um, kangaroo apple. They have little blue flowers, uh, little blue and purple flowers, okay? And then all of a sudden they'll get, because it's not in season at the moment, they'll get these little, um, it looks like a um, bush tomato, but it's not, it's a fruit. But the fruit can be really, really toxic if eaten unripe. Now, when I was 12 years old, we went out on country and I had my uncle Jerry with me and he actually ate, like it was kind of partially, it was nearly ripe. It was a bit more orangey than bright red. And he actually ate it and he actually got quite sick. And um, not long, a few days, he actually did pass away. And this was something, this was a bit of a warning. And people ask me, oh, you know, how, how do Aboriginal people know what to eat? Well, there was a sacrifice. There was a sacrifice. People, you know, as I said, you know, I don't know whether they did testing on their arms, but it would, it would have been, you know, inhaling things. It would have been tasting things. If they got a pain in the tummy, oh, no, 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 good. We're not going to eat that. You know, it's, um, it's all about sacrifice. And um, that day I'll never forget because I'll never, ever eat kangaroo apple, ever, after that. Um, when it is ripe, though, when it is red and ripe, and you can Google this, 
and split, I actually put them into a jar and I mash it up. And then instead of going to hospital for a cortisone injection, if you've got tendonitis or you've got your medial muscle that you've you know, just damaged and you, you know, you're so in pain with tissue repair, rub some ripe kangaroo apple over your area that you're having trouble with because it acts as a cortisone. It's actually better than an injection. Again, another one that's actually going to be, um, well, it actually has been scientifically proven. It was a contraceptive back in the day um, for the Aboriginal women. So, um, but I'm not gonna go into that story today. But um, the kangaroo apple can be quite dangerous. And I always say to schools, when, when I go into schools and do bush tucker gardens and design works and stuff, I always say, please don't plant kangaroo apple. I know you want it, but I don't want you to have it because, it, it, it can, you know, if, if a kid eats it and they get really sick, um, they, they could possibly die because it's really, really toxic, you know, unripe. And, and also too, there is a couple of other plants like the Dinella. So we've got the Lamandra, we've got some beautiful native flaxes and the Dinella is one of them. And I see a lot in kinders that they do have Dinellas. Um, they've got the purple little fruit. Well, yes, you can eat one or two, but any more than that, and you are gonna have massive diarrhea for 10 days and you can get really, really violently sick. It's happened to me. I did not like it. And I just always protest when people plant it. I go, yeah, it's good for weaving, but in an adult center, not in a child center because it can be quite dangerous. One of my, um, favorite things I do like to plant in um, children's areas and I do like to tell people to plant and I don't have it here because it's outside but is lily pillies and lily pillies are beautiful they come in all different species but the, the main common one you know it can grow quite high and beautiful hedge and everything I see them at doctor's offices all the time and the, the fruits are amazing. They can be um, a white fruit, they can be a pink fruit, they can be a beautiful purple fruit. Um, absolutely delicious. Again do it, now's the time to actually harvest them because they should be right now. Harvest, I put them in bags, put them in the freezer, so I've got them year round. And what I love to do is freeze dry them. So with a freeze dry, you can actually freeze dry it and, um, and crush it up into a powder form and have it that way and sprinkle it on uh, foods. And I know that you can actually um, get freeze dry online through superfoods and that's an Aboriginal owned business too. And also too, I've got freeze dried Quandon fruit. So I'm very lucky that I have some really lovely friends that have got commercial kitchens and they've also got the um, traditional, you know, hydrators and the modern freeze dryers and stuff like that. So I take all the fruits and we put them out and we process them and I only do it for my presentation. So, and sometimes I do up sample packs and stuff like that, but I don't sell it anymore because it just gets too much. But the Quandons are from Mildura. My aunts collect them and then um, they get actually um, partially processed there and then they send them to me and then I, I do the further processing. But I do have a Quandon tree on my property, but it's never really given me much fruit, unfortunately. But um, this way is just a really nice spread. And on um, Pavlova, especially yummy treats and stuff, I love to get the, the freeze dried fruit and just sprinkle it on because it doesn't lose any of its um, beneficial properties in freeze drying. And it's the same as hydrating as well. Hydrating is unbelievable. And you can do hydrating with everything. Even uh, with the mountain peppers, where have they gone? The mountain peppers, the berries, I actually hydrate. So I do deep hydration and dry out the berries to like full so they're just so shriveled that, yeah. And then I crush them up and then I basically make a beautiful powder. So um, yeah, this is actually a pepper berry wattle seed hot chocolate mix, this one. So that's, um, yeah, that's really, really good. It's actually got um, the organic cocoa as well. So that's just delicious. But you, you can get hot chocolate. If you've got some spices, mix it up. Okay, hot water, you know, or milk, or if, if even if you've got the barista, you know. Whoo, Okay, um, hello, it, it's just endless. And, and there's a lot of market out there at the moment for you know indigenous style teas and the chais and the hot chocolates and the coffees and stuff like that. And you know, it's all there and you can do it yourself. And you just gotta basically be open to, um, you know, to be experimenting with everything. So there's, oh yeah, there's, a, oh yeah, that's, a, that's another big, oh, you can't really see, but that's just freshly processed um, pepperberry there. And what else have we got? Oh, and this one here, 
and I do apologize for this one. There's not much there, but it is a lemon aspen. The lemon aspen tree, a little shrub, amazing. Beautiful little fruits, okay, that again, you can just dry out and make up, you know, little jars of it. And now this is really gonna show my age now. Um, if anyone knows Tang, does anyone remember Tang? Oh, Vanessa's the same age as me. Shane, yep, mm-hmm. Might be too young for you. You might be just too young, Tess. Oh, yep, yep, I've got some thumbs up, whoop, whoop. Tang, well, my ginger used to yeah, buy the tang and mix it up and everything, and I used to hate it. But I tell you what, I actually really don't mind. And, and I, I do miss that, that flavor now, but I actually got it back by lemon aspen. It's like a fizz whiz, but it tastes exactly like tang. And the medicinal, uh, it's, it is really, really good for um, blood, like blood cleansing. Uh, it's really good for your digestive tract as well. So it cleanses all, you know, it balances out your bacteria. So probiotics, you know, we, we talk about probiotics, but the lemon aspen, as I said, it's got, it tastes like fizz whiz, tastes like that tang that old Nana used to give us. Um, but it's, it's just got so many more beneficial, yeah, um, than tang. And it's the same with this, oh, hang on, I've got it here. This one here, it's gone a bit pinky. But oh, that there, that's the flakes that I talk about, um, that I mash up, that I grind up with the lemon aspen to make a beautiful um, a detox. So it actually cleanses, um, as I said, your blood, your digestive tract. Um, it's really good if you've got varicose veins too. So it actually um, can actually, you know, uh, so soothe that you know, the bulging and everything like that. So I, I found, I found um, a lot of my clients and I say clients, they're, they're more, more like friends now, but when people come to me, you know, I, I don't want to charge anyone. I just, I just want to be able to heal and help people and get people on the right track and kind of support their needs, but also give them a bit of insight into culture. So this is what's really re rewarding for me is that I can share this knowledge. So then people can take it upon themselves and, and learn a bit of language, learn, traditional techniques and how they're used and then pass that knowledge on and always say that if, if you do and if you are in an area that you work that you do have local mob around you engage with them don't don't be shy and sit back you know engage with everyone because at the end of the day we're all human we're all here we all walk the same path and um and it is about nurturing each other and especially in these times i found that a lot of people contacted me and they're like oh, Cassie, this is what's going on with me. This is going on. And I said, well, look, I can't afford to post out 50, 60 samples to everyone, but I'll be here to guide you. So if you do need a little bit of guidance or you do need that little insight into what you can collect or, um, or even if you're out, and this has happened and I love it. I actually really love it. Um, people actually screenshot, you know, take, take photos and then, you know, send them to me and go, is this the tree that you're talking about? And I just love it because they're out. They're out looking on country and they're trying to identify. And that shows me I've done my job. I've done my job because they're out, they're looking, they're, being, they're more selective and they're more um, engaged in their surroundings. You know, even this lady sent me pictures of poo. I'm thinking, what the bloody hell am I getting photos of poo? But she's like, what scat's this? And I'm like, actually, that's possum. <gasps> so I've got a possum in my roof. Oh, I thought it was my son mucking around. I'm like, no, it's possum. Yeah. So do you know what I mean? It, it's all fun. But, um, you know, it's all about being mindful of the environment, caring for country um, and looking after one another at the end of the day. It's, um, it's all so important. And as I said, like um, when, I, when I do my healings and, and, you know, my workshops and I, I look at this table here and now it's just absolutely crazy. But, um, you know, there's, there's so much effort I like to put into my workshops to share with you. But I also like you to share with me as well. And um, one thing I'm really intrigued to know is, is, does anybody know what the Aboriginal flag stands for? The black. What does the black mean? Can anyone unmute and tell me what the black stands for? Anyone? Vanessa. Skin colour? Skin? Yeah, the skin colour, the Aboriginal people. Well done, the Aboriginal people. 
And this is why I ask, because this is another part, this is going off trail a little bit, but being NAIDOC week, it's so important that, that you understand, okay? NAIDOC week is a very significant week for us Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, because it's about, about, you know, belonging, connecting, celebrating our culture, paying respects to our ancestors, paying it forward, you know, helping non-Indigenous people understand our, our culture and ourselves and why we walk the, you know, the country that we walk on. But the black represents the Aboriginal people. Now, as you can see, I ain't black, okay? And that's through a few factors, you know, colonization, uh, genocide, you know, the massacres, stolen gen. There's a lot, my dad was stolen gen. There's, there's a lot of factors, okay? But it's also genetic as well. You know, I am a fair skinned black fella, but you look at my two daughters, because I was married to a black fella, um, one of them's very fair like me, but the other one's black. And it's all comes down to genetics, you know? And they fight amongst themselves because it's like, hey, come on and get your skin. Hey, come on get, you know, do you know what I mean? It's, um, it's, yeah. And I find that I get a lot of reverse racism as well. I'm not either black enough or I'm just my mother's daughter, which is being offensive because, you know, she, yeah, she's white. So, um, yeah, not all black fellas are black. So I always say, you know, you just got to remember that too. The yellow, what does the yellow represent? Can someone else tell me what the yellow represents on the Aboriginal flag, please? Anyone? Sun, okay. So I've just got a, yep. So Grace is, yep, beautiful, wonderful. The sun, the giver of life. When you look at Aboriginal R, okay, you'll see, well, for me anyway, some circles. Yes, that is a sun. But sometimes I actually do a diamond and I do a circle and then I do a horseshoe. The diamond represents man because he holds a shield that looks like a diamond, okay? This is what I've just grown up with. A woman is a circle, the giver of life, because she has a rounded tummy and she gives life, okay? A horseshoe is a child. But if you see a circle and another circle, that means fire or wing in language. And it means the horseshoes around it is a gathering of people. The red, the red, what does that stand for? This is an easy one, isn't it? Yes. Earth or the land? Yes, the land, the country that we all walk upon, okay? But it also too, for some elders or some, some, um, some mob that have had that impact of massacres, it does mean that also too, the blood that is in the land as well. So it can be either, either. But um, yeah, the red, the land. So remember the black for the Aboriginal people, the sun, the giver of life, and the red for the country that we all walk upon together. Now, what does Koori mean? Koori. Are we all in Victoria here? Yep. What does Koori mean? Ah, uh, there goes Cash, she's Koori. Yes, Gracie. Victorian Aboriginal people. Okay, it's not just Victoria, it's about Victorian Aboriginals living in Victoria and born in Victoria. Okay, it is so important to know that because I wear a t shirt and has Koori as means I am Aboriginal from, Victor from Victoria, so I'm Koori as. When I go up into, and this is a bit, this is a really funny story. So, my cousin, she's her, her dad's from Victoria. He's a Victorian Aboriginal and he, the mother is like, a, um, yeah, she's uh, New South Wales, Queensland Aboriginal. When you do go into New South Wales, the borderline, they're still called Koorus. But when you go a bit further up, they're called Murrays and it changes for each state, okay? When you go to the West, you've got the Noongars, okay? The Arnulls are up the top. So it all changes. So if I went up to Darwin, they go, hey, wait, you know, what, where are you from? I say, oh, I'm Koori. And they know straight away, oh, she's, I don't have to say, oh, I'm tongue wrong. You know, I'm Koori. Okay, she's, she's from Victoria. But my cousin, because she's got a dad that's in Victoria and a mum that's New South Wales, Queensland, we call her a curry because she's a Koori and she's a Murray. So we call her a curry. So that's a bit of a joke. But if you do hear, oh, yeah, she's a curry, it doesn't, it's no offence or anything. It just means that she's both Koori and Murray. So it's um, yeah, a bit of a joke there. But you've got to remember that too. So this is, as I said, this is not just about bush food. So it is a little bit of insight into, um, you know, education as well. Because being a cultural educator, it is really important that, you know, people understand, especially for NAIDOC week, you know, the Aboriginal flag, you know, the Koori, um, 
what, what else? What else would you like to know? I'm going to put it out to you. Has there any, ever been anything that's gone on, on and you've gone, oh, I wonder what that means? Or, oh, I wonder, wonder why they do that? Like, you know, has anyone got any questions about anything that, you know, in your community or, or something that, you know, at school that something might have come up and you thought, oh, I, I just don't, I don't know about that. Has anyone ever thought about anything or has anyone got any more questions for me? Thinking, 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 thinking. Hang on, Gracie, did you have a hand up? Are you sure, Gracie? No, Gracie? I actually, no, I didn't have my hand up, but I am thinking, you know, when you mentioned the word identity throughout the workshop, and I, I know what that means in a sense, but to contextualise it within the workshop, what do you mean? Like, what does that, how, how are you using identity as a, I'm just curious around the word identity a bit more with the plants and yeah, I know it's a silly question, but it's. No, 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 that's thing. fine. So yeah, no, that, that's, that's, this is what I want to, to answer questions like this because people go, oh yeah, what were you talking about? The identity, is it about your personal identity or is it, but the identity, when I take people along to cancel, say if we were doing, um, you know, a face-to-face -face workshop. I, I would, I'd normally have like the shrubs with me for identity. So, um, oh, someone's going, sorry, hang on. Oh, thank you so much. Yep. Okay. Sorry. I was just waving goodbye to that person. Um, but Gracie, yeah, the identity part is I want you to be able to see a eucalyptus tree and go, oh, wow, that's what Cassie was talking about there. You know, the mm -hmm. identity of plants is really important because um, you might actually come across a plant and go, oh, was that cat? Is that what she was talking about? And grab it and go, oh, geez, now I've got an itchy rash down my, my arm. So oh. when I say about, I teach people about identity, it's not personal. It's about, you know, the plant leaf, the stems. Sure. This workshop normally goes for four, five, sometimes six hours. Um, but we're on a computer and we, you know, our time is nearly up anyway. But when I do see you all again next year, I'm hoping, cross fingers, um, you know, and we have this face-to-face, -face, you'll get a better understanding about the plants, about the culture, you know, about the path that I walk on to show you the identity. Sure. So then you know, and you can carry that forward, you know. So that, that's what I kind of mean. It might sound a bit confusing, but it's just like the, the flowering, you know, the flowering heads, you know. To know what's male and what's female, you have to know the identity. You have to be able to see it. So that's what I kind of meant when I say about identifying because it it is all about identifying the bush foods to know what to eat and what you can't eat. So, mm. And that's one of my things that I always talk about because, as I said, I've personally seen people have anaphylactic reactions. I've seen people pass away. I've, I've seen a lot of pain and trauma. I've even felt it myself. And it was just – it's through mistakes – and, you know, if, if people don't know it and they're not aware, they, they could really end up really sick. So um, it's really important. Like you can even Google, um, there's two young lads that um, went missing up at New South Wales. And this is a couple of years ago. But I actually done at Barrage and I've done this massive cultural um, camp, cross-culture camp. So I was working with local mob there, the Gummoys and myself. And I showed them all this way. If they, you know, just mucking around, I just said, oh, well, if you ever get lost, kids, this is what you look for. This is what you find. This is how you make a bed. This is how, what you do, blah, blah. Well, bloody when I got back, these kids actually went walkabout and they got lost for two days. And it was in the newspaper. It's a big write-up. Um, yeah, without the knowledge that I shared and the identity, they wouldn't have known what to do. They wouldn't have known that the paper bark can keep them warm. You know, mm -hmm. they... they you know, so it's so, oh, I'm getting goosebumps now because it gives me the chills. But, um, you know, it's so important about the, you know, the identity of plants because if you do get yourself in a situation, you know, you, you're you going to have to try and get out of it and you're going to have to know what to do. It's really think quink, uh, uh, quick thinking. Even like the people that have gone up bush, and I won't go up alone now, um, but go up, up into the alpine country, there, there's still six people missing, you know, there's still six people missing and it's just like they're, they're forgotten about because there's no way that they're going to be alive i can assure mm. you unless they've got really good knowledge of country and survival techniques so um you know it's um yeah 
yeah, it's just really important for me to share that. So that that's what I meant by that. Thank you. Thank you. You're Matt. very yeah. welcome. You're very welcome. <laughs> So, um, unfortunately, I, I have got a little alarm here, unfortunately, and I do have one minute left. And the thing is that um, I want to end with is um, Babapal Kui app. So, Babapal Kui app means bush tucker, okay? So, today you have learnt some Babapal Kui app, okay, bush tucker, from Warat Bajur, from the medicine woman, me, all right? So, um I do have to, I've got another Zoom, another two Zooms, so I don't finish until about 10.30 tonight, and I start my next Zoom at four o'clock, so I only have, you know, a short time to, um, yeah, get the table reset and everything, but thank you so much. I just, I just read that, but I'm really, really um, happy that I could have this time with you. Uh, thank you, Anne, for, for inviting me to, to do this beautiful workshop with you all today. And next time, I really cannot wait to see you all face to face. I can teach you some dance and do some smoking and healing and eat some mealworms that Tess is going to bring along as well. And But I just hope you all enjoyed it. And I've really loved, what I love the most is that I can see people's faces. And I love that because I do feel that I can interact and, yeah. Oh, and thank you, Shane. He's, yep, saying you love that and you can't wait to try cricket. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, and the hairbrush. I love that, Shane. Thank you. And there's links. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Cassie. Very inspiring. Oh, thank you, my dear. That's lovely. I don't know how you can type and I don't know. Anyway, that's lovely. But so thank you so much. Um, I do have to, oh, and thank you. Happy NAIDOC to you all as well. So I'm just reading all this chat stuff, but that's really cool. But please keep in touch. Um, don't be afraid to contact me. Have a look at my Instagram. It's wild underscore black B L A K underscore arts. Okay. Same with Facebook page, wild black arts B L A K. I'll send the links to Arne so you can check it out. But, but scroll down and, um, and have a look at the setup because it's really impressive. And, um, you know, it, it's a lot of hard work to, you know, going out and collecting and making sure everything's, um, you know, nicely set up for you or for me to show you. So, um, again, yeah, Nanangujin. So, Nanangujin means thank you. So, Nanangujin. Uh, wawa. So, um, hello, goodbye, and we'll all see you soon. So, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Casey, for sharing your knowledge with us today. I definitely learned a lot. And um, it was very, very interesting. Um, so like Casey mentioned, please support her by giving her a follow on Instagram and Facebook. Um, I know some of you wanted some links with genuine sellers for some of the products. So she'll send that through to me and I'll send it all through to you as well. I've got all your emails to be registered through Eventbrite. Um, we do have another workshop tomorrow happening as well with Wild Action Productions. Um, so Chris will be presenting a Zoo Zoom um, workshop on some iconic Australian animals. So if you are free, please join us at two o'clock. All the details will be on our SLAM Facebook page. So thank you to everyone for attending today. Casey, again, thank you so much for your watch. Really appreciate it. Thank you. It. Thank, thank, you, so thank you so much. Okay, see you all thank soon. You.